I'm Ben Brooks, and this is Teach the Children, and uh, this is October 11th of 2020. Time is passing very fast, and I'm a disciple, my wife is here, and she's a disciple also of Jesus Christ, and we are trying to teach our kids to be disciples of Jesus Christ. What I want to report is every last one of my kids is in their 50s. We got eight of them. And every last one of our kids are in their 50s. Now we got some in Africa and some in D.C. and Maryland and South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Denver, Colorado. Uh, we got them scattered all over. And right now we're trying to make disciples out of each and every last one of them. Because I want everybody, not just my kids, I want everybody to get to heaven when they die. Now, everybody got something to do in order to get to heaven. They got to do it for themselves. And uh, ever since 2018, uh, I've been trying to make disciples out of everybody because I learned for myself after about 60 years of studying the Bible that if you ain't a disciple of Jesus Christ, uh, you ain't going to get to heaven. I mean, that's just exactly what it is. Because uh, God sent him down here to save everybody. And uh, the way he done it is he called disciples. He called people to follow him. And if you ain't following him, then you are not his disciple. And if you ain't his disciple, you ain't going to get to heaven because you're not you're not following him. He gave everybody instruction to follow him. Now today is episode 58 of Teach the Children. That means there are 57 behind this one that I have made in the last couple of years or so. And uh, I'm continuing what I'm doing and I'm more sincere today than I was when I started. I have learned some things in the past few weeks that I did not know about my own self. God have gave me a job to do that he didn't get nobody else. And he even sent an angel to the house one day and told me all this stuff I was trying to get somebody else to do, uh, do it myself. Because I thought the elders and the people over the church, I thought they were the ones supposed to set all the records straight. Well, it may be their job, but I got a job in it too. It's something Ben Bruce got to do because God said so. When God tells you something you got to do, you got to do it. Now, he gave us some stuff back down through the years that I didn't understand. I didn't do it because I didn't understand it. Well, today I do understand it, and if, if I get a second chance, I will do it. That's what it adds up to. Now, I said second chance, didn't I? Before I quit today, I'm going to run some of that stuff by you. Uh, right now, I guess I'd better back up and get started the right way. Uh, the subject of this lesson, this is an episode really, something you can do, something you can make a, mo a movie of, something you can practice. It's an episode, and you can live it. And, and the subject of it, the subject of this episode is disciples teaching what Jesus taught them. What I'm fixing to talk about is the disciples teaching what Jesus taught them. You see, he came down here and he called everybody and he taught them everything under heaven that we need to know to get back to heaven. He taught his disciples that. Now listen. There was a lot of people following Jesus. All of them wasn't none of his disciples, but I guarantee you, the biggest portion of them was. Because everybody that listened to Jesus, the biggest portion of them, listened to what he was saying, they followed to what he said, and they done it as best they could. Now, it's at episode 58, October 11th of 2020. And this is Teach the Children by Ben Brooks, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, subject, 
disciples teaching what Jesus taught them. Now the way I'm going to start this is like I always started in video one. Deuteronomy 6 verse 7. Teach the children. And this is what God said to his servant Moses. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Now these things that I'm fixing to teach you today, that's exactly what you're supposed to do for your kids. You're supposed to teach it to them when you're sitting in your house, or walking by the way, or laying down, or getting up. You're supposed to teach them it to them so much until they knew it. If I would have had that teacher from the time I was born until I was grown enough and got married and left home, uh, I would have reared up a better family than I did. My, my kids, they're not all that good and they're not all that bad either. You see, the thing of it is, if I'd have had enough of Bible knowledge, I could have done a way better job than what I've done. Because there's nothing complicated about doing what God said. Ain't nothing complicated about it. You teach your kid what's written in the Bible about God, ain't nothing hard about that. It's extremely easy. And when kids know how to practice exactly what God said, they grow up to be better people, just like it is in Proverbs 22 and 6, you see. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he won't depart from it. If you start, start off with him like that, and you ain't no hypocrite, that is, you're doing exactly what God said your own son. If they see that, they're going to stick with it. If they catch you slipping and tipping, drinking and sipping, now, when they get a chance, they're going to do it too. That's just all it is to it. Yeah. Get started at real seriously now. And this starts in Luke, the 22nd chapter, verse 31 and 32. Now Jesus said something after he had ate the last supper with his, with his disciples that they were actually made apostles to be with him while he was on this earth. And they were the one he sent forth to set everything in order everywhere he was going to go and preach. And uh, so right now we're going to go to Luke 22 and verse 31 and verse 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may shift you as wheat. Listen, God telling everybody this now. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Now look, he said when. There's a whole lot of things you got to know before you become converted. Now, I have taught a whole bunch of it, and I'm getting away from it from a, for a couple of weeks or so. But I am going back because I didn't teach you everything that you needed to know before you become converted. Because if you don't know what God said, you can't do what God said. And there's a whole lot of do's and don'ts in this Bible. A whole bunch of them. Now, I'm going to go ahead on with the, today's episode is disciples teaching what Jesus taught them. So Matt, right now we're going to the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter, and the first verse, just one verse of this. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Now listen. He called them unto him and he gave them power. He called his disciples and he gave them power to cast out devils, heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Every last one of them including COVID-19. I wonder, do you hear what I'm saying?
God gave his disciples that power. Now we're going to read about it today because this episode, this, this episode is disciples teaching what Jesus taught them. Everything I'm going to read you today, Jesus taught it to his disciples. And what I want you to know before you become completely converted, uh, there's a whole lot of stuff you need to know. I got a whole lot of scriptures to give the whole wide world. And the, and the thing of it is now, I need about a billion helpers because I don't see no way I'm going to get around all of it. I just can't get around to everything the world needs to know about Jesus teaching his disciples. And I'm going to tell you something. A whole bunch of this took place after he had ate the last, the, the last supper. A whole bunch of it took place after that. And you have to know every bit of it. Now, back to the day, back to the episode. Now what we had last week was when you are completely converted. I had that in me and I had to get it out. I couldn't, I just couldn't hold it no longer. Now last week what you got in episode 57 was when you are completely converted. Now, I gave you that last Sunday. Now today I'm going to give you a little bit of it over and I'm going to take it a few steps farther than that. Because today is disciples teaching what Jesus taught them. So we're going to get started right now in Acts, the third chapter, and we're going to read a few verses, not every one of them, but a few of them, starting in Acts 3 and starting at verse 6. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this verse 6 is going to be a hereafter. When I get through with this episode, I'm going to go back and give you the hereafter, because what the verse 6 is saying here now is, then Peter said, talking about Apostle Peter, Still been gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. He had already gave the apostles that power. They had it within them. The devil has to obey what God says. That's all that is to it. Now I'm going to come back to this verse 6 after a while, if time permits, and I just might go over time today. That's just all it is. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Look, immediately. He didn't say it happened a week after that, a day after that, an hour after that. When Apostle Peter took him by the right hand and lifted him up, immediately he gained strength in his foot. Verse 8, And he leaped up, stood, and walked, and enter with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. That's the purpose of us doing all of the church we're doing and all of the good, but the main thing is give God the praise. That's what God put us here for. He created us in heaven, turned back and made us down here out of the dirt and out of this earth, and here I am sitting here right this minute, 86 years old, breathing God's breath and talking and feeling good and pretty wife sitting here in a pretty house to live in, uh, looking at the cars and things go down the street. Uh, this, life, this life is good, and I ain't got no problem with nothing or nobody. The only thing I regret, I didn't understand everything God told me when I was young, and when you don't know, you can't react to it. I regret the fact that I didn't take what God handed me. And if I can repent and get it back, if I get it back, the world is going to see the difference. You can rest assured there. Let's go a little bit farther now. And all the people saw him 
walking and praising God. Listen, that man had been laying there, couldn't walk from the time he was born. Now look, I've seen people right here in Harvard, New Mexico, born and couldn't walk from their mother's womb. I have seen that right here in my own in heart. I've seen people like that. Now listen, the reason he was like that uh, is because nobody with the power or nobody following Jesus' instruction close enough to heal that man. I know it was good and well as long as he laid down, somebody had to pray for him and somebody had to try it, it just didn't work. Because he lay in the same place every day. Let me go a little farther with this. I'm, I'm really amazed at what I'm saying today. And they knew, look, and, and they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were, they were filled with wonders and amazement at that which had happened to him. You see, they couldn't understand how it happened or, or nothing. They just flat couldn't understand. It was amazing to them to even see it. And the reason they seen it is because the disciples were doing and teaching what Jesus Christ taught them to teach. Let me read it one more time, then I'm going to read 12 too. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, and all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon, greatly wondered. I sure wish I had somebody to pick this up and tear it on out. I ain't got time for that right now. That's another, quite a few episodes all by itself. Uh, I'm going to read 11 and 12. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon greatly wondered. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man whole. Now he's teaching them a lesson like Jesus had taught them. You see what I'm saying? Go back and do some studying yourself and find out exactly where I'm coming from. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, listen to me now. Why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so honestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this, this man to walk? Don't you know every preacher that I've seen on TV, or heard on the radio, or even heard about, they would love for that to happen to them. If they could raise somebody up, everybody on earth to hear about what he done done. And he would be mad like he done done this and done done that in order to, to get it done. Oh, no. What they need to do is go back and find out what Jesus taught them disciples and what them disciples taught the people. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so honestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? Let me let, teach, let me read you something that Apostle Peter and all the rest of them disciples learned, including them twelve apostles. They all learned something from Jesus. Then I want you to learn something right now from Jesus, from the 16th verse of the third chapter of the book of Acts. Ladies and gentlemen, Apostle Peter preached this. And his name, talking about Jesus' name now, and his name through faith 
in his name has made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. I wonder, I thought to say I wonder do you dig me? But do you understand what I'm teaching? Do y'all understand what them apostles told the people? They could have grain they could they could have got them a great name off of what had just happened. But that ain't what they was looking at. They was they was gonna teach you the truth, no matter what. The reason that man got healed is right here in verse 16. And if y'all remember the scriptures back down the line, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all them scriptures, where Jesus, whenever he healed somebody, when he prayed for them, whatever he done, whenever he, he healed them, he would say, go in peace. Your faith, your faith have made you whole. He didn't take no credit for healing nobody. He said, your faith had made you whole. These 12 apostles were doing identically. If you don't believe it, read verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, had made this man strong, whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Every last one of y'all seen it. And the disciples is teaching what Jesus taught them to teach. And that's what this episode is all about. Now, something else them disciples taught from people. Now, the biggest part of them people there had messed up big time. A whole lot of them had messed up. You see, because they were listening to the kings and the priests and the and the Jews and the, and the elder people. They were listening to everybody talk and teach the wrong thing. It's bad. We got an earth right now that's all messed up. Because the people is preaching and teaching things that they should not be doing. It's a whole lot of it going on right now. And uh, this is what, you see, Apostle Peter was the one doing the more speaking. Because he, Jesus called his name more than any of the rest of them. That don't mean Jesus gave him any more authority than he did any of them. It's just that he used him for a mouthpiece. You see, and it was, and he'd done a real good job of giving everybody credit for everything that he done. He didn't take nothing for him all by himself. He didn't do that. And just like these books that are written, the book of Acts, let's just talk about the book of Acts for a second, because that's where this episode came from. Did you know the people that compiled these books and the people that actually written these books in the first place, then the translators that translated these books in the first place, did you know they deliberately, deliberately didn't correctly document this? They didn't correctly compile it. They deliberately didn't do it. It's premeditated faults. Now somebody, I'm hoping some of my great, 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 great grandbabies somewhere down the line will get grown and go to Bible college and and learn how to get to be a Bible scholar and get this Bible rewritten like it should be written. And then you need to start with the book of Acts because it's so far off, you don't know what it's saying. We're going to go back to that after a while from verse 6 in a few minutes. Now, this is what Apostle Peter preached to them people that specific day. And this is the advice he gave. And in this episode, the disciple teaching what Jesus taught them. This is one of the episodes. 
that the disciples preached to the people. Now, I'm going to go back and read you a whole bunch of them in the future, as many of them as I can anyway, because these things help people to get saved. Now, the reason more people ain't getting saved than what, than what is saved is because people ain't teaching you 100% the truth. That, that's what it adds up to. Now, this is what Apostle Peter said to that group of people the day that that man that was lame from his mother's womb and had laid there 40 years, people, or over 40 years, before he got here. You just think about being born a baby and then get to be 40 years old and ain't never walked. You stop and think about that. If you get sick right now and you go to the hospital and go to the nursing home and places, before they can release you, you got to learn how to walk all over again. Y'all never think about that? This man jumped up leaping as soon as his foot got strong. He didn't have to learn how to walk. He left there running and walking and leaping and doing everything, praising God. Hollering as loud as he could, praise God. That's what took place with this fellow. And it's a whole lot that goes with this. Uh, I'm going to give you this little bit. And then I think I'll probably go back to when you are completely converted. Uh, because there's a whole lot of scripture you need to know that. But right now, for, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, read you the 19th verse. Then I'm going to go back to verse 6 because I want you all to understand what, what's the matter with this, the problem with this, what's going on in this earth today, this COVID-19 and all these fires in California and floods down in the East Coast and South and all off in now. Uh, I want you to know what's going on with all this stuff. All this stuff is happening because of sin. Come the last bit of it is happening because of sin. And the re reason that there was all them sick folks around when, in back in Jesus' days was because of sin. Not, not every last one of them. Now, anything I teach you is not 100%. I don't care what I say or how I face it. Everything is not 100%. It's just some portions of it is true, and some portions of it ain't as true as the other part. That's just the way it is. Now, this is what Apostle Peter preached, and then I'm going to go back to verse 6. Apostle Peter preached to all of the people that were listening to him that day that was looking on them so honestly and trying to, within themselves, they were trying to say that these are holy men because they healed the, the, the sick man. Well, that ain't the way it was. That man's faith played a big part in his healing. His own faith played a great big part in, that, in his healing. Now, this is what Jesus said to that group of people that ran up on them and Solomon's greatly won out on the porch. That must have been a very beautiful temple. But ladies and gentlemen, that was the second temple Solomon didn't build that one. He built the first one. But them people around in them countries and communities around now built that one. They said it took them something like over 40 years to build that temple. That's what we're talking about here today. And believe you me, a group of people tore that temple down and burned it up. Then they went back hollering Jesus this and Jesus that. There's a lot of people slapping God right in the face. They done done their dirt, throw their rock, and then they try to hide their hand. But God can see everything and know everything is in it. Verse, six, verse 19. About to be the preacher. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. I taught you a lot of scriptures on this. Apostle Peter said, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's all you're going to get out of that part. 
because I'm coming back with it some of these days. Listen to it one more time. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Them people had been messing up and messing up ever since Jesus had been on the face of this earth. And the older Jesus got, the more they tried to kill him or do something wrong with him. It was a lot of people on the face of this earth actually hated Jesus. They actually hated Jesus because God sent him down here to seek and save that which is lost. And I can't understand why people were so jealous of him. Now I got something for every last one of you. Matter of fact, everybody on the face of the earth needs to take real good heed to what I'm fixing to give you. And I'm going to ask my granddaughter that puts all of this stuff on these videos for me. And this was a whole lot of work for her. Now, I don't get everything done I want done because it's about the hardest we get anything done. Nothing is coming easy. It's a great big job. But I do need her, I'm fixing to go back to verse six. Acts three and six. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason this earth is in the shape it's in fixing to give it to you right now. Acts 3 and 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, for such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ladies and gentlemen, old and young, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus told that man that couldn't walk, rise up and walk. I don't know really read to you. What he done. He didn't only just walk, he leaped and walked. He was running and leaping and praising God because he was doing something he had never done before. He was doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, old and young, right this minute, I'm going to ask my granddaughter to put every one of these, I'm not going to read them because of time, I'm fixing to, to quit right now because it's too, uh, it's too expensive for me to go too much overtime in what I'm teaching. So I ain't gonna read them, but I'm gonna ask her to put them on the screen. And it starts from the 26th chapter of the book of Acts. Acts 26, started verse one, and read through verse 11. I am Carla, I am the oldest granddaughter, and I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Today I will be reading from Acts 26, 1 through 11. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself. Verse two. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all things of which I am accused by the Jews. Verse 3, especially because you are expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. Verse 4, my manner of life from my youth, which was spent 
from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. Verse 5, they knew me from the first if they were willing to testify that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Verse 6, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. Verse 7, to this promise, our 12 tribes earnestly serving God night and day, hope to attain. For his hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Verse 8, why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? Verse 9, indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 10, this I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Verse 11, and I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. Mm, mm, mm. Acts 26, 1 through 11. Now, I probably won't say nothing about it on my next video. But if y'all read it, y'all will know where I'm coming from and where the problem is today you'll know exactly what the problem is and where it's coming from today. Now what I may do is give, give, give you a few more scriptures after I finish the next video and add to this because there's more to it than what you're getting today. And all of them tells us exactly why we're having all of these different things going on on the face of this earth at this day and time. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ, and I want everyone else on the face of the earth to be. And all I'm trying to do, I ain't trying to take your everyday life. All I want you to do is to get to heaven when you die. That's, that's all I'm working on right here. But you've got this life to live, and you've got to live a disciple's life. Therefore, it's a whole lot of things you've got to know if you want to get to heaven. If you don't know it, you're going to mess up, you're going to foul up and you just might miss heaven when you die. That's all for Ben Brooks today. May God bless you.